comprised of a variety of food products such as salad dressings, spreadable, and mayonnaise. The high volume fraction of densely packed oil droplets contribute to the gel like structure with higher storage modulus than the loss modulus in the rheology strain studies. Some of the proteins that have been reported to stabilize the concentrated oil in water emulsions are shown below. For example, the animal based proteins such as egg and milk proteins, the plant based proteins such as soy, pea, and gluten protein. In our research, Canola protein isolate was used to stabilize 50% oil in water emulsions. Canola protein made up of around 30 to 40% of canola meal depends on the varieties and growing conditions of the plant. The major protein fraction are cruciferin, which is a 12S globulin, and 2S albumin, also known as napin. Canola protein is known for their well balanced essential amino acid profile and rich in lysine and sulfur containing amino acids such as cysteine and methionine. Canola protein also show great functional properties such as emulsifying properties and gelling properties. These tables show various canola protein that have been utilized to stabilize emulsions with different oil concentration. For example, the enzymatic modified canola protein, cruciferin and napin fractions, as well as canola protein gum arabic conjugate. To date, no canola protein stabilized concentrated emulsions was reported. Therefore, our goal was to investigate the stability and rheology of canola protein stabilized concentrated emulsions as well as their stability in different environmental conditions. The overview of the research includes isolation of canola protein using salt extraction methods, the formation of emulsions using high pressure homogenization, the composition of the emulsion made out of 50% of canola oil stabilized with 1 to 4% of canola protein at pH 7. And lastly, the characterization of the protein isolate and the emulsions. The result I'm going to show you here are the proximate analysis of canola protein and canola meal, the SDS page and interfacial tension of canola protein. For the emulsions characterization, we will be looking at the droplet size, zeta potential, creaming velocity, viscoelasticity, and microstructure. This chart shows the proximate analysis of the cold pressed canola meal which is kindly donated by Pleasant Valley Oil Mills in Alberta. The canola meal contains about 30% of protein, 40% of lipids, 9% of moisture, 6% of ash, and the rest was 41%, presumably carbohydrate. After the salt extraction, the canola protein isolate comprised of 94% of protein with 6.24 conversion factors from the microcolor analysis. Both lipids and ash content were reduced to 1%, the moisture and other components were reduced to 2%. Next, the protein fractions analyzed by SDS page under reducing condition show an approximately 68% of cruciferin, where the molecular weight ranged from 16.7 to 42 kilodalton, and 26% of napin, where the molecular weight ranged from 7.3 to 11.9 kilodalton. Since the ability of the protein to reduce interfacial tension is crucial in emulsions formation and stability, we measure the interfacial tension of the protein solution with 1 to 4% of canola protein at the oil and water interface. This graph shows the interfacial tension of protein solution and oil as a function of time. As we can see here, the interfacial tension decreased with time and reached an equilibrium. The average interfacial tension shows no difference between 1 to 4% of canola protein, with values range from 1.6 to 0.9 mN per meter. Such low reduction of interfacial tension of canola protein hasn't been reported before. The difference of interfacial tension compared to those reported in the literature could be due to seed variety, defending process, and extraction methods. Now, we have our characterization of the emulsion stabilized by 1 to 4% of canola protein in terms of droplet size distribution. On the y-axis, it is the volume fraction, and on the x-axis, it is the droplet diameter in micron. As we can see in the graph here, all emulsions show more than one peak with a large peak around 10 micron, which can be a result of protein or droplet aggregations. So to verify the presence of the droplet aggregations, 10 millimolar concentration of SDS was added to the emulsions to disrupt any aggregates. In the second graph here, which is the droplet distribution of the addition of SDS, we observe a shift of the larger droplet peak to a smaller droplet size peak. It could indicate the presence of droplet aggregations, which is most evident in 2, 3, and 4% of canola protein stabilized emulsion.
the average droplet diameter in terms of default tree, which is the volume average, was also measured as a function of time. In the first graph, the emulsion stabilized with 1 and 2% of canola protein didn't show any significant changes after 4 weeks. And the one stabilized with 3 and 4% of canola protein showed extensive particle aggregation and reached a maximum after 2 weeks of storage. Such an increase in aggregate size could be attributed to the excess protein-induced droplet aggregation. When the emulsion were mixed with SDS, the default tree of all emulsion dropped and didn't show any significant change with time, which indicates that the emulsion were highly resistant to coalescence due to the thick interfacial membrane by canola protein around the droplets. Since the concentrated emulsion also served as a base for viscoelastic foods such as salad dressings, we want to investigate the emulsion stability and rheology with the addition of salt, vinegar, and heat treatment. Following a general salad dressing recipe, we added 1% of salt, 10% of vinegar, and a combination of both to the emulsions. The effect of thermal treatment, in this case, heating at 80 degrees for 30 minutes, was also studied, as most of the food product will go through thermal processing during production. For the emulsion characterization, we first look at the effect of the addition of salt and vinegar on emulsion zeta potential, since droplet charge play a role in stabilizing the emulsion droplets against creaming. Here, we have the vinegar-treated emulsions in pink, the salt-treated emulsions in orange, both salt and vinegar-treated emulsion in green, and the non-treated emulsions are in blue. The addition of vinegar decreased the pH to 3.7 and increased the zeta potential to about 20 mV. The addition of salt decreased the zeta potential to minus 6 mV due to the charge screening effect. For both salt and vinegar treated emulsions, the zeta potential was at about 10 mV. The droplet charge of the original emulsions was at about minus 12 mV, and there's no significant difference of zeta potential as the canola protein concentration increased from 1 to 4%. The graph on the right here shows the volume average of the emulsion droplets as a function of canola protein percentage and different treatments. In general, with the addition of both salt and vinegar, which was in green, the default tree is higher compared with either vinegar or salt added emulsions that was in pink and orange. Interestingly, with the addition of SDS, which is the graph on the right, the volume average of the salt and vinegar treated emulsions significantly decreased. No significant difference in droplet size was observed for the non-treated to the one with different treatments. This shows the larger droplet size in the presence of salt and vinegar was due to droplet aggregation. Again, this analysis shows that the droplets are exceptionally stable to coalescence in various conditions. Next, the creaming velocity of the emulsions with different treatments were measured using a photocentrification method. The creaming velocity was measured in micrometer per second with centrifugation speed at 3000 rpm. In general, the creaming velocity decreased as the canola protein concentration increased. This could be due to the smaller droplet size as well as the higher viscosity that I will show you in a moment. For 1 and 2% of a canola protein stabilized emulsion, the creaming velocity of salt and vinegar treated emulsion were higher than that of the salt or vinegar emulsions that was in orange and pink. For 3 and 4% emulsion, the vinegar treated and both salt and vinegar treated emulsion had higher creaming velocity than that of the non treated and salt treated emulsions. Now we have the viscosity of the emulsions after the addition of salt and vinegar. The viscosity of the protein solution was also measured to investigate the effect of oil droplets on the emulsion's viscosity. This graph shows the viscosity of the emulsion, which was shown in the closed symbol, and the protein solution, which is in the open symbol, as a function of shear rate. The canola protein concentration 1-4% to were represented in different color. Here, we have four graphs showing viscosity of emulsions without treatment, with the addition of salt, with the addition of vinegar, and the addition of both salt and vinegar. For all emulsions, the apparent viscosity decreased as the shear rate increased, indicating the emulsion showing a shear thinning behavior which is commonly seen in concentrated emulsions. With the addition of salt that was shown in the top right figure and the addition of vinegar that was in the bottom left figure, the viscosity of all emulsions decreased compared to that of the non-treated emulsions. 
The decrease in viscosity was more pronounced with the vinegar-treated emulsion compared to that of the salts-treated emulsion. And for the both salts and vinegar-added emulsions, they show the highest viscosity among all. Now, the viscosity of protein solution was shown in open symbol here. In general, the viscosity of the emulsion was higher than that of the corresponding protein solution. And among all, the emulsions treated with both salt and vinegar show the highest increase in viscosity compared to the corresponding protein solution, which is almost a thousand times higher. So the addition of salt and vinegar had no effect on the viscosity of the protein solution, except for the 1% protein solution. And the increase in emulsion viscosity with both salt and vinegar must be due to the oil dropper aggregations that we have also seen in our flocculation degree calculation. Next, we have the viscoelastic properties of the emulsions. They were characterized by dynamic oscillatory measurements that were strain and frequency sweep. For uniform comparison, oil concentration of all emulsions were adjusted to 44.5% after the addition of salt and vinegar. The non-treated emulsions are shown in blue, the salt added emulsion are in orange, the vinegar added emulsion are shown in pink, and both salt and vinegar added emulsions are represented in green. The open symbol here shows the lost modulus, which is G' double prime, and the closed symbol here is the storage modulus, which is G'. prime. Here in the strain sweep studies, the storage and loss modulus of the emulsion are plotted against the strain percentage. In the low strain percentage, the storage modulus of all emulsions in all treatments were higher than that of a loss modulus, showing a gel-like structure. But the nature and strength of the gel were different for emulsions with different protein concentration and treatments. At 1% canola protein stabilized emulsion, the non-treated emulsions and emulsions with either salt or vinegar show a weak gel-like structure, with a short linear viscoelastic region and rapid drop in G' prime before 10% strain. For 2-4% of canola protein stabilized emulsion, the non-treated emulsions that was in blue show proper LVR and strong gel-like behavior. But with the addition of either salt or vinegar, the gel strength significantly drop and the emulsions show a weak gel-like behavior. In the presence of both salt and vinegar that was in green, the gel strength of all emulsions were highest among all treatments and show a strong gel-like behavior. In the frequency sweep studies, the storage and loss modulus were plotted against the frequency. For all emulsions at lower frequency, the G' prime remained higher than that of the G double prime. However, at a higher frequency, which is more than 10 Hz, most of the emulsions show a drop in G' prime and increase in G double prime, leading to a crossover and gel breakup. For either salt or vinegar added emulsions, which is in orange and pink, the modulus show a higher dependence on the frequency compared to the non-treated and both salt and vinegar added emulsions. This type of viscoelastic behavior is typically a weak gel structure. For both salt and vinegar added emulsions, there was in green, the G prime show more independence of frequency and a larger difference between G prime and G double prime. This show a reduced inter droplet motion at shorter time scale and a strong gel like behavior. To directly compare the gel strength of various emulsions, G prime at 0.1% strain within the linear viscoelastic region that is on the left here was replotted. Overall, for the non-treated emulsions, that's the blue bar, G prime increased from 1% CBI to 2% CBI and remained unchanged at 3% CBI, then further increased at 4% CBI stabilized emulsion. With the addition of either salt or vinegar, G prime didn't change significantly at 1% protein stabilized emulsion, but significantly dropped at all other canola proteins concentrations. Finally, when both salt and vinegar were added, a significant increase in G prime was observed for all emulsions. To study the effect of thermal processing on emulsions, the non-treated emulsions were heated at 80 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and cooled down to room temperature before analysis. After heating, all emulsions turned into a strong and self-supporting gel. In the strain sweep studies here, the heated emulsion showed a significant increase in both G prime and G double prime compared to that of the non-heated emulsions at all protein concentrations. As the canola protein increased from 1 to 4%, the gel strength of the heated emulsion also increased. 
This shows the vital role of the excess protein under heat-induced gelation. From the yielding behavior of the emulsions, an indication of the gel structure can be studied. In contrast to the two-step yielding in G double prime for the non-heated emulsions, the heated emulsions show a single-step yielding behavior. The two-step yielding behavior of the non-heated emulsions was due to the breakage of clusters and interdroplet bonds. After the crossover point, the breaking turned the emulsion into a liquid-like structure. For the heated emulsions, the interdroplet bonds within the emulsions were much stronger. So the breaking essentially breaks the gel in a single step, leading to a movement of droplets and gel breaks down. Similar to the strain sweep study, the frequency sweep studies also show a significant increase in gel strength upon heating. Except for the 1% canola protein stabilized emulsion, all other heated emulsions show a steady increase in both G prime and G double prime with frequency, and no crossover was shown, which indicating a stronger gel behavior. For the last result, I'm going to show you the confocal micrograph of the emulsions. The oil phase here are shown in red, and the protein are shown in green here. The scale bar for the micrograph is 10 micron. For the non-treated emulsion, the droplet size decreased as the protein concentration increased, which is in according to our droplet size analysis. Similar observation I also show here in the salt or vinegar treated emulsions, and no indication of extensive protein or droplet aggregations was observed here. Now, in the presence of both salt and vinegar, extensive droplets and protein aggregation can be observed, which increase with the increase of protein concentration. This is also consistent with the maximum increase in viscosity and viscoelasticity that I showed before. At 1% protein stabilized emulsion, the droplets are larger and some coalescence can be observed. For 2 to 4% of protein stabilized emulsion, all the droplets appear to be coated with a thick layer of proteins, which help forming an interconnected droplet network that is capable of holding a structure. At 3 and 4% of protein stabilized emulsion, excess protein in the continuous phase also aggregated, and thus contributed to the increased gel strength. Finally, heating the emulsion at 80 degrees Celsius leads to the most extensive protein and oil droplet aggregations. The 4% canola protein stabilized emulsion even form a continuous protein matrix that holds the oil droplets within them. Such behavior confirms the maximum increase in gel strength of all emulsions among all treatments. To conclude the study, canola protein isolate was proven to be an effective stabilizer for the concentrated oil in water emulsions. The droplet size decreased as the canola protein concentration increased from 1 to 4% and there are no evidence of coalescence due to the thick interfacial layer. The addition of 1% salt at pH 7 lowered the droplet charge, but no further increase in droplet aggregation. This can be due to the stabilization ability of canola protein. The addition of 10% vinegar lowered the pH to 3.7 and increase in droplet charge that provide electrostatic repulsion among the droplets that leads to the lower viscosity compared to the non-treated emulsions. Next, the addition of both salt and vinegar leads to a large increase in droplet aggregation due to the lowering of charge as well as the lack of steric stabilization under acidic pH. The aggregation also resulted in higher viscoelasticity as compared to the non-treated salt or vinegar treated emulsions. Finally, heating the emulsion without any salt or vinegar at 80 degrees Celsius lead to a dramatic change in their appearance. All emulsions transform into a very strong self-supporting gel, with higher storage modulus of all emulsions. The gel strength of the heated emulsion increased with an increase of the protein concentration. Heat-induced emulsion gelation was due to the protein denaturation that leads to the strong bond formation between the exposed non-polar of the protein at both oil droplets in the phase and in the continuous phase. All right, that's all for my presentation today. This is my reference. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me through my email here.